All right, in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to break down a Gerber file into something like this and then turn it into a solid using a sketch tool. But I wanna take a brief detour through Kirimoto because we're gonna end up there anyway. And for a mesh tool, you can just click on the slicer. It'll take you into Kirimoto. And I wanna show you bringing the same file into Kirimoto. So let's bring the copper layer in from a Gerber file and see what Kirimoto's default sort of interpretation is. And there's a lot of guesswork because Gerber files are basically SVGs, um, you know, geared at circuit boards. And so what we'd normally do in a situation like this, given the default interpretation um, for Kirimoto's uh, Gerber engine, is do something like a tracing operation. And a tracing operation, we're going to find a part of the circuit board uh, or the path, the traces that we want to hone in on and say select this and then command uh, click this will select all of the traces at the same z height and pick something like a v-bit um, offset follow um, inside and slice that and we get paths like this and, and that's this is a reasonable path to isolate the copper traces in this case given this interpretation but you know you might not want to cut these pockets out it, depending upon you know your layout this interpretation might not be the right one and while the paths look you know good and we can animate it and this is a lot of fun um, it doesn't if we want to do something else from the gerber file then we're going to have to go back to the source and turn that into a 3d representation that we can mill um, our own way so let's go back from here and inside of Kiri, go to mesh edit we're going to go back into this tool and i'm going to show you starting from scratch uh, how to do this particular use case. So the mesh editor is a 2D and a 3D editor with sketches. And so if you have a sketch selected inside a mesh tool, then you can import uh, a Gerber file, just like you would anything else. And if you import in 3D mode, it comes in as a solid like Kirimoto, but you come in a sketch and it brings in uh, a sketch um, in 2D and shows you the isolated parts. Actually down here on the sketch, normally it's gonna come in flat like this, but we can, look at the layers by pumping it up a little bit. And and because there's interpretation involved even in this, we'll see that in this case, these polygons were nested and we want to sort of isolate that a little better. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in more detail in another video, but in this case, we're gonna nest these polygons and that's going to isolate the interior from the exterior, uh, move that to the bottom of the Z stack. <laughs> Um, and then we have a couple more things we want to group together. So if we look at this from the top, we'll see that we actually want to union these specific paths. So we can select everything, deselect the majority of the copper and just union that. And that produces a layer like this, which is useful. And when you union things by default, it's going to group them together. But there's one other thing that I want to show you in this case, and that's, um, we want to turn these voids into solids as well. So I'm gonna select everything and do an operation called even odd. And even odd, as long as everything is nested cleanly without any overlaps, it's gonna create an outside to inside nesting. So you have this layer and then you have this layer right here, and then you have this layer inside of that. And that allows us to create three different Z extract extrusions uh, from the solid. We have one we have one other problem though, which is if I go back to the exploded mode, you'll see that those parts that we just newly created are not in fact grouped properly. So what I'm gonna do is select everything, deselect these two groups, what you already had from before, which leaves the rest of these together, and I'm gonna group those. And when I do that, then everything shows up almost like where we started at the beginning of the video, with a couple of exceptions, I want to move this to the bottom. It doesn't really matter, it's just, just for, for the visual representation. And I'm going to take that and move it to the top. And now we're basically where we started at the beginning of the video. And I'm going to show you how to extrude this the way that we want to, to bring into Kirimoto. So the first thing I'm going to do is, because in this case, I really only want to mill these guys and not these guys, I'm choosing to union these and then extrude just this layer. So let's call that a millimeter and then I'll extrude these 0.7. And then I'm gonna go into object mode and select all my solids and union them. 
to produce a single unified solid that I can bring into Kirimoto. And so then I will just export that as an STL and go over to Kirimoto where I will import it. And this is a different board than what we was produced by default. I'll go in here and I will trace, select just the lower levels with command click again and see we have outside on the loop selected. And we have a slight problem because it interpreted those wrong and that's because the outside is selected here. So what I wanna do is deselect the outside line. And now it can interpret these properly. Uh, and those are the paths that it's gonna mill and we can animate that and see what that looks like. And that looks good. So we've achieved what we want uh, through a different means than we did before. So I hope that's helpful in terms of how to mill boards in general uh, using these two tools. And then I want to go through some of the Boolean processes in a later video to show you how to the rules of the road for how you're going to Boolean things in different ways in the sketch modes, which are a little bit more interesting. But that's for another video, and I hope this was helpful. Look forward to your feedback. Enjoy. Thank you.